Good evening. Good evening, sweetie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful today. Wonderful, <clears throat> wonderful. <laughs> Girl, I know. And how are you all, the one who is showing up on this live tonight? How are y'all doing this evening? Put in those comments that I am okay. Or you can say, um, I'm glad. Or you can say, I am not okay. <laughs> Whatever you want to put into the comment. You can just put in the comment, hi, Felicia, how you doing? How are you doing this evening? <laughs> or you can throw a thumbs up like Miss Katina did. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Whatever you like. Whatever you like. Just put something in the comments to let us know that you are here with us on this evening. Because no matter what's going on, baby, I'm still breathing. So I'm glad about right. that. Mm -hmm. I'm still breathing. And so I have to give God praise um, on today because, you know, God has been good to me. And not only that, but he's been good to many people that right. I know of and as well as worldwide, um, especially when I hear the interviews um, of other people that have survived the um, coronavirus. Right. And even though they didn't survive it, I'm still going to say that God is still yet good because God is good. Um, and he's good all the time. Like, let the church say amen. Amen, <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> yeah, God is good. And he's good all the time. And, I, and, and that's the reason why I say he's good even in the midst of tragedy because God is still good because of who he is. And okay. a lot of people don't know who he is. And so they just know of the Lord. So that's a big difference between knowing of the Lord and then knowing who he is. Yeah. And also who and also who he is to you. Yeah. Because if you have some type of experience with God, baby, can't nobody take that from you. That's right. Nobody. And I do mean nobody. So how y'all doing, Miss Elisa and Candice and Ken Andre, Christine? I'm so glad to see y'all up on here tonight, baby, because we got a conversation to talk about, baby. Let's talk about this yes. coronavirus. I mean, I want to know why people are continuing to still talk about this coronavirus, you know. But there's something that, that was on my mind, y'all. I want to know what y'all are thinking. I was thinking that how do you adjust to something, uh, temper, you know, adjust to something like this, especially when um, it's out of your control. And then I, I asked God a question. I said, Lord, is there anybody in the Bible that had to adjust to something like this? Because this coronavirus is being compared to the children of Israel. You know, how uh, Moses had to go and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Yeah. And so God um, sent um, plague after plague after plague. But at the same time, um, what God was doing was removing his people from Pharaoh so that he could let his people know that he is their God. Right. And so is God saying the same thing tonight, today, you know, as far as this uh, coronavirus? Do you he think God well is saying the same thing? He very well could be. I definitely believe he's speaking. And I believe if we all have our ears tuned in to the spirit, we can connect. We might not know exactly all what he's doing and what he's saying because, um, mm -hmm. you know, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, so on and so on. But I definitely believe <laughs> it could be that. It could mm -hmm. be that. I think it's a little different. I don't think it's exactly um, what transpired in that time frame. Mm -hmm. um, that was, you know, during during the um, dispensation of um, the law. Um, now we're in grace. <laughs> so yeah. it's a different season. It's a different time. Mm -hmm. And what happened for the <laughs> children of Israel at that time, it's a reference for us. And that's my belief. It's just a reference for us to know who God is and his capabilities and what he will do. Exactly. Um, but I definitely believe he's speaking. He is. And I believe that God is speaking to us individually, though. 
Because we, we make things so corporate. We make things. We oh, do. All of us. <laughs> I know. I mean, we make things so corporate, and I don't know why. I mean, even when the mm. Lord gives us a word, we want to tell it to other people like God has shared the word with them. But really, God could be just speaking to you. We do have to be mindful of whether or not God is speaking to me individually or is it to be shared corporately. Right. But individually, all of us have to answer to what we believe. Yeah. <laughs> what we yeah. believe and who we believe. Right. Whose I report do are, that. Go exactly. Ahead. And whose report are you going to believe? Right. So um, you know, it is an individual walk anyway, because you are responsible right. for your own actions. You're responsible yeah. for your own um uh, beliefs and all those things and if you say you believe Jesus Christ Jesus ain't going to ask you uh, about your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your brother and all yeah. that. he ain't going to ask you about them he's going to ask you about you did you do this, did you do that, and y'all right. should know now from the book of Revelation but just in case you don't know on judgment day Jesus is going to ask you did you feed me, Oh yeah. did you uh, clothe me, that means how are we treating one another, God is all about his people Yeah. that's the he's type of God judge we the house Oh. He's coming to judge the house. Come on, go. Go, we got some comments up in here. Let me see what these uh, <laughs> uh, King Andre said, I think of Job, too. Yeah, Job is a person that has to Ooh, adjust. Great Ooh, example. Buddy. That man had to adjust. And, and, the, and the thing I love about Job is that he was transparent in his adjustment. Yes, <laughs> you know what I'm was. saying? He was very he transparent. A, he kept a 100. Oh, baby. <laughs> And, and, and for him to have a conversation with God at the same time, right? Questioning him, talking to him, letting him know that he was angry. He was let he was he was pulling it all out there. Look, God, this is what I got right here. <laughs> but yeah. of course, God had a conversation right back at him. Who well, are you? Hello. To ask me these type of questions because I am God. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not to say that God don't um want us to question him. But we have to be mindful of other type of questions that we're asking because we gotta be, we gotta be respectful of who our God is and knowing oh, yeah. that He is who He says He is. Yeah, that's but never changing. Mm -hmm, and that He's the one who who made everything. He's the one that knows the end result. So I mean, but at the same time, He still didn't cuss God. He still didn't cuss Him. Uh, Even cuss though His wife told Him to. <laughs> Exactly. Even though his wife told him to go, go come on. I think his friends did too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. You have uh, another comment. He is reminding us of who he is and giving us a test when uh when the job is uh gone. Who do you trust? Are you going to go in depression or are you going to continue to believe God and have faith? Amen. Hebrews eleven and one. That's a good one. Now faith. Okay. Now faith. You girl, come on. Put now that word faith. right there in front of faith. Uh, now. now faith. <laughs> so, but that's, you know what? When I saw that, I was like, Lord, what you're saying is, is that we can't use the faith that we were using 10 years ago. Here it is. <laughs> that's a different type of faith that you <laughs> have. Gotta be a switch here. <laughs> oh, God, I know. Because the, the situation that you went through back then ain't the same as what you're going through right now. Right. So it's a now faith that is the substance of things hoped for in the evidence of things not seen. That's right. So what I, what I don't see, I'm still believing, even though right. I don't see it, you know. And I'm also hoping at the um, at the same time that means I'm expecting, I'm anticipating. Right. I'm sitting at the door waiting, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting at the door waiting for my daddy. <laughs> I'm sitting at the door waiting on you, God. Daddy, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but God, you know, God will talk to you. He'll be like, look, you need to go find something to do. Right. right. Go find it. Get yourself occupied. Right. Your time ain't my time. <laughs> Girl, I know. <laughs> my goodness. Let's see. Let's see what, what, what other comments we have here. Um, Y'all keep talking to us um, tonight. Now, this is a yeah, good like conversation that. that we are having on this evening. I think this may be um, a disruption to your norm. God is coming to get our attention and shift things around. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He most definitely is doing some shifting up in here, baby. You know, right. I have heard a lot of sermons about shifting. A shifting take place. 
but it's always a shifting that you don't see. This right here, I can see this shifting. It's very, very visual. <laughs> it's, it's very visual. <laughs> it's very visual, baby. Yeah. It's, and it's also not just visual. It's also very um, touchy feeling. Yeah, you, you know, can touch it. You can. Oh, it's it's, it's tangible. It's tangible. Baby, it's tangible. That's the word I was looking for, girl. Come on, Felicia. It's tangible. <laughs> Ooh, oh yeah. And so now you got to see if God is tangible. Mm. In the midst of this, yeah, yeah, God will become tangible in the midst of all this, baby. If you if you would just allow Him to come in, in the midst of your crying, in the midst of you hurting, in the midst of you being depressed, He becomes tangible. Huh? No, because I tried it. Yeah. In the midst of all my crying and uh, crying out to God, all on the flow, boogers everywhere, snot everywhere, crying. I mean, God, come on, man. Woo! Okay, I think we've all been there. Anybody been through that? Okay. And you call on Jesus, and then something would just come over you and overshadow yeah. you in the midst of it, and you're like, God, what happened? <laughs> He will become tangible in your um yes. in your weakness. Yes. He'll, ma he'll make you stronger in your yes. weakness. Don't, and don't ever go ahead, Felicia. I said I was gonna tag back on to Ken Andre's comment where he was saying that God is coming to get our attention and shift things around. I absolutely agree with that. I'm like we were already saying. Mm -hmm. Um, my pastor was preaching today, and oh, it was a really good message. And it was something he made reference to. And I was like, okay, God is truly speaking right now because whether you like it or not, it's the facts anyway. And so he was saying mm -hmm. how, you know, it, it didn't matter. He wasn't talking about the sinner. He was talking about us all, even the body of Christ. He said, you've been playing church all this time. Now mm -hmm. you don't have a church to go to. So you would you do all your dirt through the week and do your dirt on the weekend. And then you will come in, clean mm -hmm. yourself up and come in and play church on Sunday. And then it would be all great. And then you go out there and you're still doing the same thing, whether you child of God, claiming salvation, or the center man. He said, now we don't have no church. Now yeah. what? Now, now what? what do you have? Do you truly have that foundation? <clears throat> do you truly have that relationship? And so, yes, that God is coming to shift some things. I'm coming to shake your foundation. I mean, it's so yeah. much more than that in my mind. But I'm coming to I'm coming to shake your foundation. This you you call me God, but am I really your God? You yeah. call me your savior, am I really your mm -hmm. savior? Mm -hmm. You call me your provider, but am I really your provider? Or are you depending on that job? Or are you depending on the govern government? Mm -hmm. Are you waiting on that that check to come in your mail and be deposited? You know, are you truly depending on me? Or are you depending on the world? Because mm -hmm. he's shaking up everything in this world. Everything yes. that has been our norm has been completely shaken. Yes, baby. To the church, even to the church, it has been completely shaken. Yes. And you so know, people are still meeting, going to the church. Yeah, it's still not it's, the same. It's still not the same. It's not but the same. They're still running to the church. I'm, I'm talking about like, baby, God is, God is everywhere, but right. God is really already in you why do you feel like you have to run to the church to get what you need when he's already with you he's already with you he's there you are basically the church yourself basically right. but um but felicia you shall right baby he's shaking your foundation and i was thinking about um it's two things i was, I was thinking about when you said the, about the story about the three little peas <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> Y'all don't break it down for us, girl. <laughs> girl I, I can't help it. These visuals just be popping up in my head. The three <laughs> little pigs. <clears throat> and then I also thought about in the Bible where it talks about uh, building your house. So some people built their house on uh, sand or stars or whatever. But then I thought about the three little pigs. Mm -hmm. uh, they were building their house out of straw. Only one and, hand common sense. <laughs> <laughs> one hand common sense. Of course. And when the wolf came, he was able to blow it apart, you know. But when he came to the one that uh, built our bricks and all that, he, he wasn't able to blow it down. Right. But then I thought about the scripture 
where Jesus was talking about what is your house built upon. And I was thinking about the the foundation. Is Jesus Christ your cornerstone? Because it's important to have a cornerstone because without the cornerstone, your house will not be able to stand. It needs a cornerstone at all times. Uh-huh. <laughs> at all times to hold that foundation to hold it up <laughs> so if one, if one side flop down guess what your house going down too <laughs> it's, it's going to be floppy so um, it, it was just some visuals that was popping up in right. my head about your and, foundation is important and, and what you said taps right into what my pastor's message today was he said he's not in the building he's in the house because now we no longer have a building, so to speak. Mm-mm. So when we're not in this building, is he still within you, the house? You yeah. hold the Holy Spirit, not this yeah. building. You do, it's in us. Come so on, wherever man. we go, that that becomes a, that becomes a worship. Where, if it's on, in the bro. car, if it's in your yeah. house, wherever we at, because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. He's not mm-hmm. in the building, he is in the house. The house being the indwelling of us. Yes. Yes, Lord. Because he don't have no building right now. Oh, God. Come on now. (laughs) (laughs) I thank you, Lord, because this is good. Okay, let me get to the comment. I know we got some good ones tonight. I know, God. I got to go up now. Can I (laughs) just say, we up here here tag team preaching. Come on now. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Um, uh, Jeffrey said, when we make adjustments, it's an opportunity to grow in our faith. I mean, but people don't look at them as an opportunity. They don't. You're at, oh my gosh. We be looking at it as, um, um, what's the word? What's the word? It's not an opportunity. It's, uh, we look at things as an, an embarrassment or a humiliation or uh, punishment. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, that's the first thing you want to think of? No, it's an opportunity. When when change takes place, it's really an opportunity to shift right along with it or to, like Jeffrey says, grow in your faith. Right. Um, because a lot of people still are using that scripture that all I need is a faith like a little mustard, mustard seed. <laughs> but your faith does grow. You know what I'm saying? It does grow. The the closer you get to God, the more you get to know him, uh, the more that you and Jesus walk this journey together, right. your faith grows. You're not going to be in the same position um, stagnant like the children of Israel. If that was the case, then God would have left them where they were. <laughs> I'm just saying. He would have left right. them where they were if, that, if that's what God wants us to do, is to stay stagnant or to stay stuck in the wilderness. No, it was never God's intention for his children of Israel to be in the wilderness for 40 years. That was their fault. He was trying to get them to where they need to go, but they were stopping their own selves. So mm. it is an opportunity. It's not punishment. It's not embarrassment. It's not a, a humiliation because you don't have your job anymore. You've been laid off and all that. It's an opportunity to get closer to God, to um. Grow your faith as well. It is. It is. Uh, let's see. We kind of do talking about we gotta put our cast out. We, this, uh, we gotta put this, we gotta um <laughs> accept some offering. Praise Lord. <laughs> Elisa said he is shifting everybody and everything. Get ready. We are the church and not the building. Amen. Amen. The wolf is the devil. <laughs> <laughs> so the wolf and the star are the three little pigs of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> who is your cornerstone? There you go. You got to know who he is. Not of him, but who he is. Do you know who your cornerstone is? This circumstance forces us to look within to the spirit of Christ that should be inside of us to nourish and comfort us. If we haven't been feeding anything substantial to our soul, we don't have much of anything to draw from. Amen, sister. That's true. When you go to a dry well, you're not gonna get in the water. Ooh. Just I'm just saying. You go to a dry well. You oh my god. 
The people would say, don't go over there, go over that way, hello, that dry, baby, go over there where the water is. You know what I'm saying? You better right. go over there where the water is. And not just water, but the living water. The living water that would make those bones get up and live. By that. Mm. That's the type of living water that I'm talking about. Yeah, that's I'm getting. No, any kind of water. We need some living water. That's right. And listen, say he is dwelling in all of us. Yes, he is. Amen. We have to learn when to come out of Egypt. You got to leave that Egypt mindset too. Amen. Yes, yes. The mindset that God is shifting us from on today, as far as this coronavirus is concerned, you're not going to have the same type of mindset no. when it's all over. Mm -mm. Never the same. Mm -mm. No. But there are going to be some people who are going to want to go back to their ways that there was before. Oh, yeah. But God's people, they would not have the same mindset. Mm -mm. I'm going to say, yes, I'm your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen, sister. <laughs> but, you, but just like you said, Amanda, you got to be the one to put something in there yeah, in order so to it can flow. It. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. So you do have to put something in there. A lot of people don't read their Bibles, um, you know, it, it, for whatever reasons. There are many reasons to not right. read their Bible. But this is a good time to read the Word of God because God's Word is what's going to save you. In the midst of your quarantine, you know, That's right. whether you suffer from anxiety, uh, worry, depression, finances, um, worrying about what your kids going to eat, whether or not the bills going to get paid, the word of God is what's going to save you. Because when you wake up in the morning and you're having this grateful attitude um, about the things that you do have and the things that you have been brought from, especially things that you have been brought out, brought out of before. Don't forget those things because you're going to need those things now, baby. You're going to need those memories of how God brought you out a long time ago or either last month or last year. You're going to need that because when, when you're, while you're sitting at the house and you're lonesome, whether you you know by yourself or you have your family or you have um, somebody that you're taking care of in your house, you still <clears throat> can find yourself um, sitting back, um, you know, being depressed or thinking or overthinking or um, being worried or anxiety and all those type of things. Which, is why, you, which is why you have to be very careful of, um, of how you're spending your time in this season. Exactly. And I know I, I'm trying to be mindful of that. Even though I'm still working, I work from home now, I still have to be mindful of my time mm -hmm. because the business has slowed down drastically for us. But thank God I still have a job. And so there's a lot of idle time, a lot of idle really? time. And so I've had to figure out, okay, between, while I'm still working, what can I do to fill that idle time? Because now I'm at home. I have more flexibility. I have more space. Um, I have, you know, just the time where I can do more than when I was actually going out to the building to work. And mm -hmm. also, even when I get off from work, you know, now it's me trying to think about it a little differently. I've only been working from home about a week. So I've had a week to kind of get adjusted to, you know, kind of my schedule and how my days are going to go. Now this week, I said, OK, I want to do something different this week. I want to, you know, make some better choices this week, whatever that is, you know, if it's health, mm -hmm. if it's spiritual, if it's mental, whatever it is just to do something better that's going to keep me in a keep me in a high place and that's yeah. a high place in Christ thinking on those good things thinking on yeah. those you know just good <clears throat> things and not allowing the things that we're seeing to just take hold of us because it's not hard to. forward to um, you stay on social media too much that stuff just gets to it'll yeah. fill you up mm. and I look at a lot of the stuff that's being shared posted as yeah. seed planet. And mm -hmm. so we have to be careful. I mean, it's so much stuff that comes to my inbox. I'm like, if I see that video one more time, if I see you forwarding me something one more time, one more time I know exactly. how to mute you. I know how to block you. I'm sick of that because it's Come like, on, man. 
I know we want to stay aware and I believe that. Let's do that. Like I have a group of friends that we just message one another <laughs> back and forth. And sometimes it's real serious stuff. Sometimes it's funny stuff. But outside of that, I'm like, man, y'all getting on my nerves. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the other people like you guys are getting on my nerves because I don't want to see that all day. I purposely yeah. don't look at the news, um, but I'm on social media. So I get a lot of in- information from social media. But I'm lo- noticing I have to step back. I have to step back because it's just too, too much. It it's just too much. It's too much big um, fighting mm-hmm. among the saints of who have in church and who shouldn't. Come on, girl. Let me just say that. <laughs> That's that ministry's discretion. You don't have to like it. You don't have to accept it. All I say is, can we be safe? And I'll just say okay. that. But exactly. with that, let it go. Like, why? We should be the example right now. We should be the foundation. We should be what people are coming like, man, what are you doing? Who who are you? Like, who is this guy you're talking about? Like, people yeah. should be coming to us and we just doing this. The body yeah. of Christ. And it's like, oh, Lord. And we're exactly. doing it on social media in front of the world. Media. And the devil's just sitting back like, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. I want y'all to come against one another. And so we just got to do better. We just got to do better. So I purposely just been pulling back a little bit from social media and try not to just see too much and also not share too much. You know, some stuff I will share, but I'm like, you know, no, that's okay. Because you can't. I don't think we can go a day right now without hearing about Corona. I don't think that we can go a day without hearing how many are being impacted right now. I don't think I've went a day so far without hearing people are dying from it. Mm -hmm. So to try to act like it's not there, I think that'd be really foolish. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't think we have to be so engulfed in it. I think that's where we have to stay prayerful, you know, Mm -hmm. and stay in that type of mindset of just praying for people and, and keeping them before God. Because it it, it still is a rough time. It's a rough time. You know, Mm -hmm. even though it's a blessing, you know, in some regards, uh, you know, for many families, the other side of it is it's just not the greatest season for many people. Mm -mm. We just got to find that balance. It really isn't. And and the thing about it, though, Felicia, that when, when, when tragedy happens like this, it really does put you in the spotlight. It, it, it shows you who you really are and who right. you who you were proclaiming to other people that you were, even whatever you were p- proclaiming to God in privacy. That's true. God, is, you really are um, showing up, whatever that is in you is coming out, basically. That's but right. you're, you're letting people know who you the really are. Of you. Exactly. And um, that's something that we need to keep in front of God so that we don't get so far away from him because you can get away from God by right. getting so um, engulfed into uh, everything that's going on around you. And you don't want that to happen. You really don't. And so it, it is our responsibility to make sure that our mental health um, be, be healthy and safe um, yeah. because because that's where that's where it really begins. It begins in your mental, your um, your mind. And so when you're looking at everything, you're hearing everything, and you're seeing what people are doing, you're reading what people are, are saying on the social media. Like you said, you're just planting seeds, and it starts in the mind. And if you ain't casting down those things, nipping it in the bud, like we love to say, right then and there, <laughs> and you you just letting something grow. Right. And when, and when it grows. You start acting different. And in this day and time, we, we need to be doing what, um, what Key Andre was saying. I right hear it's a time for us to grow up and know God for ourselves. Because that's what, it, that's what it's really all about. Why are we so concerned about what everybody else is doing? Whether you're at church or not, who cares? Hey, they're going to do what they want to do. <laughs> if people post this stuff on Facebook, who cares? They're going to do what they want to do. People are individually going to do what, what they, they want. want to do. You have no control over that. And that's what our segment is about. What do you do about those things that you don't have any control over? Right. Let it be. Just that's let right. it be. Who says that you got to be uh, the monitor, the hall monitor <laughs> of the school? You want to be the hall monitor of the United States. You want to be the hall monitor of the social media. You want to be the hall monitor of what's on TV. Mm. You want to be the high monitor of who who are going to church and who ain't going to church. Mm. Like, 
be at the house knowing the Lord for yourself. And praying for folks. <laughs> praying for people. Exactly. That's you right. know, pray for folks. Don't be so concerned about what people are doing around you. Even the president. I'm not concerned about what he's doing. Why? Okay. Because I know somebody that's bigger than him, and that's God. God is bigger than the president, baby. He let me move on. When I start talking about my God, I'm like, Lord, you 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 so bad. I got I serve a mighty God. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We serve and he's the bad, he's the bad man. <laughs> you know, baby, come on now. And Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ is bad all by himself. Let me go. Let me move on. Let, let me get you. <laughs> I know some people don't know where to begin when it comes to reading and studying the Bible. I have right. found some very um, powerful reading plans on the Bible app called You Virgin. Every seed of the world is so valuable in keeping our thoughts in the right place. It takes intentional effort. Amen. Amen, Amen Amanda. And I love that Bible app, uh, You Virgin. And they have some awesome, awesome uh, Bible yeah. plans on there for any type of situation. Right. I mean, any, any type of situation. situation. All you gotta do is just type in what the situation is, and a, and a reading, a Bible plan will be right up under it. So we really don't have no excuse. But hey, if anybody on here, I thought of listening to the replay or whatever, you can go straight to you version the Bible app, and it will take you exactly to yeah. where you need to go. You don't have to start from Genesis. You don't have to start, you know, mm -hmm. from some certain chapter. You can just go to the Bible and search for whatever your situation is and it's going to be there yeah. and, and pray and, and, and that's you the know, lord to guide you thank you ask him what is it that you need to get out of these scriptures what is it that he's saying to you and your family jeffrey said they are um there are people being used by the enemy to cause confusion by putting out wrong information that can make adjustment difficult uh, for most people amen right. about that because one thing about the wrong information about um, causing confusion, uh, God is now author of confusion. So anything that's pertaining to confusion, I already know you ain't of God, baby, because God ain't the type of God that is in, in yeah. confusion. He just, that's just not his name. He's not the author of it. He, thank you, baby. He's just not. No. Uh, can Andre say, this is not time for division. This is time to come together as the church to show the world hope in Jesus is the way. Amen. Oh, that is so true. And you know, that is so true. That's where my mind was, too, while we're doing all this bickering and complaining on who shot John. Like, we have so many things that we could be praying about in this world. Um, mm -hmm. Out of everything I've seen and, and heard on social media and from the news station, there was just one quick video I seen um, a little bit earlier today. And there it was in another country. And there was this father coming home. He's a doctor. And mm -hmm. he was coming through the door. And his little son, had couldn't be no more than two or three, was running to him. And he stopped him so he wouldn't mm -hmm. hug him. And he just broke down, he dropped to his knees, then he just broke down. And I mm -hmm. thought, how excruciating that has to be as a father, who you went all this time, able to come home and embrace your son and your family after a hard day of work in the doctor's mm -hmm. office, you know, doing surgeries on top of surgeries. And in this place and time in our life to where just hugging your son, which is something natural, could be life and death for that little baby. And mm -hmm. I thought, out of everything that we got going on right now, we praying for one another. We praying for the people that is being impacted. Obviously, the front, those on the front line, our nurses, our doctors, yeah. everybody that's in the medical field, they are being impacted in some way. Because if, as they're being exposed, their families are being exposed. Exactly. And so it's just a revolving door. And so are we praying for that? Are we praying for our nursing nursing homes? There's a sister that, um, an old um, church member um, in California, her husband just passed away. He already had Alzheimer's and he was in a nursing home. But mm -hmm. on Friday, he passed away because he contracted the virus. Mm -hmm. And so him and another person passed away. And there's so many others that contracted it within that nursing home to the point it's in the um, local news in California. Wow. And some uh, someone I know, 
his, he had some family members in a nursing home in Michigan and there's 60 people that's been um, exposed and not only exposed have caught the virus. Mm. We have our elderly that are going down. Now, obviously the disease or the virus is not a death sentence, but it can be exactly. because it's on a higher level than the flu. And it, it's, it's taking people out of here. And so again, out of everything we doing all of this and Exactly. So much to be praying about. So much to be yeah, yeah. attaching the about. Lord's mm-hmm. name on it. You know, it's exactly. just so much. And we sitting here worrying about who shot John. At this point, none of that even matters. People are in total deray, disarray right now, mentally. Like, they don't know what to do. Like, what am I going to do? I'm fighting for toilet tissue. I'm fighting just to get food. Are we praying for those people? Because some people mm-hmm. don't know how to handle this. And let's be honest, exactly. in our generation, probably most let's of us on honest. here, we have not experienced anything of this nature. Even our ba- baby boomers, because I asked my mother, she's of the baby boomer era. Hey, did you experience anything? Like She's like, nah. I said, mm-hmm. so it may have been the more silent era that experienced this more serious viruses that came out at a certain time. But baby boomers, the generation, um, what are we, Generation Z? And then millennials, we ain't experienced this in our Mm -hmm. lifetime. So our minds are being completely blown right now. Who knew we was going to fight over toilet tissue? Exactly. (laughs) Who knew you would have to fight to just get alcohol? Who knew you was going to fight just, I can't get no rice? I can't get no noodles? Uh, mm -mm. (laughs) So my point is, when you really just start thinking about that in detail, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so much more, so much that we can be doing outside of that. Let's forget all that noise. You know, the devil going to try to come in and cause confusion at any time. That's just what yeah. he does. Um, but we got to know how to stop him in his track. And let's keep our mind focused on those things, whatever is good. <laughs> and mean. just remember those out there. People are fighting right now. They and they're dependent, they're dependent on us. And they don't even know they're dependent on us. <laughs> Some of them don't Amen. even know it that they're dependent on the body of Christ. We're the vessel. Exactly. We're the instruments that God has to use yeah. to move. <laughs> and what are yeah. we doing? We're well, we sitting up here finding each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beacon over stuff that's not even important. And and to think about that little baby who cannot hurt. Oh. He doesn't understand. That crushed me. That crushed me. <laughs> he doesn't understand at all. Right. But daddy knows what's going on. But, you know, for him to break down and show some vulnerability, that just broke my heart. But, yeah. the, th- but the thing about it, we as the body of Christ are supposed to be praying for those that are, you know, in those type of situations. But just because we're not in it, just because it ain't hit home yet, we think we, we, we think we're in the clear. But say, you're not. Can you say that again? It ain't hit home. You think you're in the clear. And you said it ain't hit home yet. It, Which means it, it could, home yet. It could mm-hmm. come knocking at your door at it any time. It can come knocking at your door at any time. And that's the, that's the type of mindset that you really shouldn't have as if, oh, you're invincible. You're not invincible. Yes. You're not. You don't walk around here like you are immune to tragedy <laughs> because that would be a lie that the devil has planted in your head. I'm not immune from anything. But what I do know is, is that I have a relationship with Christ. And just because I have a relationship with Christ does not mean that I'm immune. Yeah, I'm invincible. I could just go walking out here like um, Peter walking on the water. (laughs) Peter was able to walk on the water because Jesus told him to to come out. Because Peter asked him, can I come out there? And Jesus said, come out. He had to get permission from Jesus Christ to even walk on the water. If he would have walked out there in the water without Jesus, then it would have been a different story. But he walked out there when Jesus said, come on. When he walked out there, then he got distracted. But you can't just walk around here like you're invincible. You can't. That's you can't right. have that type of mindset because that is not of Christ. That is not of Christ. The Holy Spirit is wise. And all is in all his ways, the Holy Spirit is. And he will guide you. He will tell you what to do. He will tell you uh, where to go. He will tell you what to say. He will tell you how to act. I mean, come on now. Some of us are not allowing the Holy Spirit to take over. 
What you allow to take over is your um your reaction, your thought, your um whatever you saying on TV, whatever you saying on social media. You allow those things to overtake you. You are not allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and overtake you during this situation. We are not invincible. It could touch home, y'all. It really can. And when it does, that's when you want to fall out. That's when you want to start screaming. No, you should have been falling out before. You should have been already <laughs> on your face screaming, already hollering, Jesus Christ, come save me. You should have been doing that already. But like I said, tragedy will bring about opportunity. It will really mm. be. Like y'all was saying, it will bring about growth. You ain't going to be the same after this, baby. You just won't be. So, I mean, we, we just, we as Christians, and when I say we, I'm talking about all of us, whoever, we, whoever says that they are a believer in Christ, we have to be mindful of what we say, what mm. we do, how we act, because people are looking at us. If, 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 if they see everybody else acting a fool, and they also see the believers acting a fool, there who are is. they going to count on? Hello. Who are they going to lean on? I mean, who are they going to be like, well, what's the point of me going to God and they acting like this? Yeah. Acting like their life about to be turned out and they acting a fool. Come on now. God okay. said, even in this tragedy, you will lack nothing. That's the word that God yeah. has gave me, that you will lack nothing. You don't have to worry about anything. All I want you to do is trust me. But I want you to trust me fearlessly. I want you to trust me without fear. I want you to trust me without shaking, without wavering yeah. from here and there and to and fro. Like you don't know who God is. No. Some of us know who he is. But, we, but you know, you get distracted. You know, we get distracted. Let's be honest. But... After you get distracted, just let just just turn around. It all it all it takes you. What is that? One eighty? Is it a one eighty? Um, when you turn around, or a ninety, or a six, baby, what whatever it takes. <laughs> Might just be a one one eighty. <laughs> whatever it takes to turn around, right, and, and, and look toward God. Basically, then that's what you that's what we, that's what you do it's because we all get distracted. We all and I think that's talk. what the season is designed to do, just that yeah. because so much has been stripped from us. Where now all we have, if you smart, all you have is him. That's <laughs> it. That's all you have is him. All uh, and a lot of people are just sitting up waiting on no money from Trump and all of that and this and that. And this is Felicia's personal opinion. This is not about politics or anything. I'm not waiting on it. I, I, you know, I feel it's a price tag on that, on that stimulus package, but I can't speak for everyone. If I, if I'm the one that's unemployed right now and, you know, I need something, who am I to say? So again, this is Felicia for her mm-hmm. house and what I prayed for. Um, there's a price tag on that, but at the end of the day, you can't put your trust in that. Mm-mm. Because, see, that got a price tag on the end of it. Best believe it does. In some way or another. And see, in Christ, there's no price tag. Yeah. Amen. Free. Free. No there's charge. There's no price tag. <laughs> Did I say that again? Free. No <laughs> charge. <laughs> now, whatsoever. Somebody that's going to give you perfect peace in the midst of this yes. situation. People going to be looking at you like, girl, what, why you ain't concerned? Why you ain't worried? Why should I be? I'm, baby, I have perfect peace. I have peace in me because of Jesus Christ. I don't have to worry about any of this. And if it were to come near my house, I would still be at peace. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. It's, he was already here before the tragedy came. Yeah. But in some cases, it's going to take a tragedy in order to get Jesus Christ because some people did not have a relationship with him before the tragedy came. But either way it goes, it's still an opportunity. It's still an opportunity to grow. It's still an opportunity to get to know him. I mean, this is an opportunity, y'all. It is. It really is. I um, I mean, a great opportunity. (laughs) A great opportunity. Great opportunity. Mm. A great opportunity to show the world who God is through right. you. Right. And through I'm thinking you. about this. You can't you can't use church hurt no more as an example. <laughs> you can't be like, oh, they hold too long. You yeah. can't you can't say none of that because most churches, not all, are not having services. And if they are, 
it's very it's, the, the schedule has been revamped or they're doing it from their homes like ours is we're still having service but it's only eight of us there so we're still within mm -hmm. our cdc guidelines 10 or less <laughs> yes, and we are six feet apart from one another even in that church and mm -hmm. we barely there an hour and a half maybe give or take and we out of there we, you know, we, you know, talk. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. And we out because mm -hmm. we don't need to be sitting here conjugating in the building. Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. then there's some, you know, that's still having a full on. I know they showed a church this morning in Florida. Full, I mean, packed to capacity church. Wow. I'm like, well, okay. Wow. Okay. But, my, you know, go back to the point with that is, you know, yeah, you can't use it as, as an excuse. So. People are gonna do what they want to do. I mean, look at the children of Israel. Were y'all mad at them? <laughs> I mean, I was mad when I was reading it. I'm like, God, you done provided them food to eat, and they seem to be complaining. Every step because of the way. <laughs> every step of the way. By God, these people didn't like nothing. They didn't like anything. And then when you laugh, everything that the Egyptian had, you was able to walk away with it. Mm. You were able to walk away with all that gold and all that stuff that the Egyptians had. You were lacking anything. And then you all all this time that you was with God, he was showing who showing them who he who he is. Uh, I, I'm just looking at children. Like, oh God, I know I see why you were mad. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. you know, people are human. They're gonna do what they want to do. They're gonna do what they want to do. But all we can do is pray for yeah. them. Thank God for grace. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank God we don't live in the time in the in, in, in the time of the law. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for grace. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, baby. Because I've been hard headed many times before. <laughs> All right. Can I let's look at these comments, y'all? Can, can Andre say you're not super man or super woman? Amen. Don't take this for granted. It is real. Amen. Alyssa, it really is. Even though some people still think it's a host. Yeah. Um, uh, Latrice said, I pray that our families are covered and protected. The virus, no play, will come near us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, we have to use common sense as well as listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We really do. We are responsible for that. I know some people quench the Holy Spirit. Poverty is not my portion. Amen. The Bible says Jesus is my portion. Hallelujah. Amen. My God, when you got Jesus, you got all that you need. Yes. But the thing is, is that you got to use it. You got to go into it. You got to go and tap into it. You got all that you need in Jesus Christ. Abide in him and as well as he abide in you. Amen. And he said, I'm not either partial. Yes. It is partial, thing. You didn't just say preach, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. No excuses. We don't have any excuses. We really don't, y'all. And you know, we it's really so don't. funny how people were not taking it serious. And, mm. you know, although it's been around for a while, they just was downplaying it. And then it was just like, boom, just hit the ground running. And so, you know, I saw a lot of people, social media, oh, this is just a hoax. This is just this. And for a minute, you were only seeing entertainers that were coming out saying, I got the virus. And, you know, Idris Elba, um, Tom Hanks and his wife, and then some basketball players. I'm like, whoa. For a minute, even I was like, is it only hitting the entertainers? Yeah. <laughs> but then it starts spiraling it's out, right. out of that circle. I mean, yeah. even on social media and some threads, you know, you saw a lot of ignorance and still some ignorance out there. But, you know... I ain't gonna believe it till a black person get it, and not an entertainer. And yeah. now, fast forward yeah. a week or two, it's sitting at a lot of our doors. Mm -hmm. I mean, even at the church's door, because there's been so many in this last week who have passed away in the body of Christ, in the body of Christ. that are in high power, are like bishops, and, you position. know, way up there. Yes, and I'm like, okay, and that, and that now, like that blew my mind. Now that we my believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I was like, Lord, these are believers in Christ. Yes. 
And that blew my mind. It, it was like it made me think differently. I was like, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Right. I couldn't tell you what are you trying to tell us because um, I can only, I'm can i only responsible for my own salvation. So I was like, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Because we can, we can uh, assume and come up with uh, revelations and all that, but right. it's an individual walk. It really it's is. An I can't speak on how why that is happening and how that is happening. All we know here is that they got the virus and they're no longer here now. They mm -hmm. are with the Lord. We pray that they're with the Lord. Um, but at the same time, I'm still breathing. So I'm like, Lord, what is that I need to be done? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what my that's what my mindset is, is that Lord, what am I supposed to be doing? What is that I can what is it that I can do for your people during this time? You know, that's why I find myself on on Facebook Live, you know, giving a word or whatever, because that's what God lay on my heart to give, and yeah, that's what I do. That's what He's that's instructed what you to do. Exactly, that's what He instructed me to do. So whatever God has instructed you to do, you have to just follow those follow instructions. Through. Yeah, and, and and also trust Him. You may not understand why He's doing it or why He's saying it or why He's uh, 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 uh telling you to do these things, but you still have to do it. You just have to do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do because if you don't, you'll be walking in disobedience. Mm. But, but it's amazing. It, it's, it's it's shocking. It really is. Uh, it makes you think differently. Um, but just yeah. like uh, Sister Felicia was saying, we need to be praying for one another. So we gave spiritual ways of how you can get through um, this quarantine as well as this um tragedy of that's happening behind the coronavirus. There's also some natural things that we have to do as well. Um, because, hey, don't forget that you still have a body. <laughs> that, that, that's the flesh part. The body still needs help too. The mental state of your mind needs help too. So don't forget about those. You know, think, thinking differently, think on things that the Bible said that think on things of above and think on good things and yeah. think on things that are pure and honest. Um, so we do have to be mindful of what we're thinking about. Wake up in the morning and just sit down on the floor, turn on some music, gospel music or some music, uh, meditation type music and just sit there and don't think about anything. Just sit there right. and just, just say, thank you, Lord. And you're, you're being mindful of your thoughts. Because you do have to be mindful of that, because that 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 mind is a battlefield right there in the Ooh, mind. Lord, if, if, if you don't if you don't keep it in check it on a daily basis, you are you'll so be, right. You'll be thinking things that you shouldn't be thinking, and you'll be you know, you'll be acting them out. So be mindful of what you're thinking, as well as your body. I do uh, want to say, um, that when you're going through a tragedy, I want you the first thing for you to do is to breathe. Because sometimes we forget to breathe. We forget to just count from 10 on the way down or however way you want to count and just breathe. Because sometimes we'll cry so much that it'll take our breath away, our breath away, and we'll sit up there and be like, we about to get our breath. <laughs> like a little kid. <laughs> <I'm so weird. laughs> just torn up. I know. She keeps like, catch your breath, breathe. She's <laughs> been crying so bad, and girl, you, yeah. you don't have an asthma attack. <laughs> but God, but God would say, breathe. Just, just don't forget to breathe. Right. Breathe when you see stuff on Facebook. Breathe when you see stuff on media. Because when you breathe and you exhale it out, you're, you're, um, you're pushing out a certain type of negative energy. So breathe, please. Close your eyes and visualize a peaceful uh, scene. You know, whether you be on the beach or you sitting. There, I mean, you can, you can visualize these things. Now, you can also act it out. You can go and get you a beach tower, get your beach ball, and sit out on the floor, you and your kids, and say, baby, we at the beach. And then get you um, some type of light that be like a sunshine. I mean, or you can go outside, especially when it's really beautiful and nice out there. You can just go act out those things. These are things that you can do body-wise because we do have to take care of our bodies. Let's not forget about the bodies now because we're – Sometimes we do tend to forget about how we can keep ourselves occupied during this time. So just like Felicia was saying, you do have to keep yourself occupied because now we have so much idle time. 
And yeah. what, is that a scripture in the Bible that says the, um, the devil workshop is an idle man? Yeah, an idle mind is a devil workshop. There you go. So you do want to um, keep yourself occupied from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. You can make out a schedule and say, this is what I'm going to do from 7 to 9. This is what I'm going to do from 9 to 10. Whatever it is that you know the Lord laid in your heart to do, because you got to do those things. God has spoken my spirit and said, every morning I want you to wake up and open up your blinds and um, open up those curtains and let some fresh air in. Because usually when you're sitting in the dark, <laughs> there ain't going to be no light up in there. So you do <laughs> want to let some light, some natural light into your household because it, it makes a huge difference in your life. Um, yeah. Just as well as allowing Jesus to be in your life as well. Let me interject really quick. I'm tired to go back to what you meant said, just so we can make sure that we're clear with everyone. And that phrase, the idle mind is a devil workshop or playground, is actually not um, biblical. <laughs> I thought that it was. I really it's not. That it it's not. It's not. What your people say? It's just um, It makes mm -hmm. sense because if you stay idle sense. and you kind of just kind of you know your mind will start playing tricks on you if you're not careful. So I do believe that you have to be careful, but it's not you biblical. You should have been saying a rap song, now my mind playing tricks on me. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 I just wanted to put that out there. It's not no. biblical, but it makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. Because you, your mind will play tricks on you, y'all. It will. If you are sitting there early not doing anything, you ain't going right. to never sit up there and be thinking about the wrong stuff. <laughs> and you know what we doing that every day of time, you know, you want to be mindful of what you're thinking. Right. Uh, keep yourself occupied. I think people got there from when David was sitting at home and he was supposed to be on the battlefield and all of a sudden he saw Bathsheba. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden he started, you know, uh, he, went, he, he went from committing adultery to murdering somebody. So mind is all of, over. <laughs> I know. You would get out of character if you are mm. being idle, if you are not occupying your time, mm. you know what I'm saying? If you're going to watch Netflix, it's okay. Make sure you put that on the schedule. From 3 to 5, I'm watching Netflix. But from 5 to 7 or 5 to 6, I'm going to go walking. You know what I'm saying? Do other things. Don't be hanging around the house looking at the news, Netflix, all day. Because and it's okay to do it for an hour or so. Right. But after a while, you, you're going to have to get up and do some other things. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying. Our minister uh, on the line. Yes. Yeah. 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 And took a deep sleep and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Because, you know, people that idle, you know, they, they will. Uh, suffer hunger, whether that's naturally so, or spiritually so, or psychologically so, because you can suffer hunger um, physically as well as psychological. Because yeah. when you're sitting around just being idle, you, you're allowing things to creep in. Yeah. You are. You are allowing those things to creep in when you're laying around doing absolutely nothing. Now, if you if you made a day of planning to do nothing but just rest your mindset, because a lot of people do uh, take a mental health day, and they say, okay, I'm just going to do absolutely nothing. I'm just going to lounge around in my pajamas. Right. I'm going to get my, my cup of coffee or my tea or whatever, and I'm just <laughs> going to sit here in front of this TV. Some people need that, and I don't see nothing wrong with that because I have done that before myself. But but when but when I hear the Holy Spirit talking to me, telling me to get up, right? I have to get up. I'm gonna have move. to get up and turn the TV off because the Holy Spirit is letting me know that you can't do you can't sit here too long like this because you're you after a while something is gonna creep in. That's right. Satan is gonna um come in and tempt you with something where you're gonna end up doing something you shouldn't do. So whether that be thinking the wrong things or saying the wrong things or getting on social media, you know, just talking at the mouth or whatever. Whatever it may be, it's still outside the character of God. So you do want to be in tune to what the Holy Spirit is saying and whatever you do. Because we really probably be checking in with God in whatever you do anyway. Right. You really it do. Really you want to check in with God. I mean, the, the honest truth. Thank you, Amanda, for giving us 
Yes. That's, that, that's, that's the say. better version. <laughs> That's the that's better the way. That's the correct way. <laughs> yeah, because when people read that, they think that that's only for people who work or don't work. If, if you don't work, you don't eat. But you can suffer hunger psychologically and as well as physically and as well as uh, mentally and spiritually. So you do want to make sure that you are full <laughs> in all areas of your life. There's going to be a balance. Okay, the next thing is to cry if you want to. Cry if you have to. That's what I mean. Cry if you have to. Scream if you have to. Yeah. Make sure you get that stuff out. Don't be lashing out at your family members. Don't be <laughs> lashing out at your kids. <laughs> I'm just saying because frustration does cause that. You know, you know, make you want to just go. Like, you take, but the, the loved ones just be the first one to get it, don't you? I'm just gonna be honest. Yeah. But we yeah. They get it the worst. <laughs> We can't be projecting our anger on them or our frustration. And then you don't want to be internalizing what's, uh, what you're feeling. Right. you got to get it out. You have to vent. You have to talk to God. you got to talk to somebody. It's okay, it, um, it's okay to have somebody to talk to, but I want y'all to make sure that you talk to like-minded people. Mm. Talk, don't talk to somebody who has never experienced what you've been through. That don't make any sense to me. There's no point in me going to a person to talk about somebody who died from the coronavirus and they have not experienced that. There's no point in me talking to someone who has not experienced someone being in the hospital on the ventilator and, and they and they um can't even go visit them. Because mm. when you're in the hospital on the ventilator, family members cannot even go in there. So That's there's right. no point in me telling that type of story to somebody who has never experience that because they don't understand. They, it, it would be impossible for them to understand. Mm. So you do want to talk to somebody who who is going through that. Somebody who is who has a family member or a loved one or a friend or family in the hospital under ventilator. You want to go talk to those individuals. And sometimes wow. it, it's going to be stranger. It's going to be stranger. It's okay to talk to that stranger. Because y'all can lean on one another, but when you talk to people, talk to people who are like-minded, who are going, who have been through the same mm. experience as you, because they'll be the only ones who understand you. It it don't make no sense for me to go talk to somebody who don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. Occupy yourself sense. with something um, positive. Occupy yourself with something positive every day. Every single day, occupy yourself with something positive. Stay positive. Um, think of things like the Bible say, put an honest and true things from above. Um, don't be um, sitting around complaining or thinking about you know the outside world because God got that taken care of. Mm. At this point, there's so much to do. I mean, since I've been sitting here at the house, Felicia. I find so much things to do. I even bought myself a bike for my birthday because you know, my birthday is April the seventh. Ah, <laughs> look at you! <laughs> right on, girl. Right on. I know. I know. And I said, Lord, this don't make no sense. Why you got me to ride on a bike, Lord? <laughs> but my daughter has, um, you know, uh, got me into it. You know, because she got me off my lazy behind. Tell my mommy. Are we going to walk it tomorrow? Or are you going to be lazy? And I oh. just shake my head. I'm like, Lord, are you are you speaking to me through my child? <laughs> well, I tell you, the kids will get you right, won't they? I know. They mm. will. And so I will be uh, riding my bike, y'all. So I'm going to be finding some other things to do as well. Um, right now. You know, because, hey. You might as well make the best out of your situation. Find something good in the situation because Amen. all things work together for our good. You know, all things work together for our good. So just be mindful of, of the things that you're thinking and doing. And so on that note, we're going to be ending this um, talk forum, y'all, and we'll be back on next Sunday. And still continue to talk about this type of situation because we have to do a check in with, on our people every every week and possibly if you could do it every day you could uh, you should because uh, we just don't be knowing what's going, what our neighbor is going through. So make sure you reach out to somebody this week. That's right. And that, anything, don't know. anything you want to add, Felicia? 
before we end it tonight. Uh, be safe. <laughs> Just be safe and be wise. Stay prayered up and keep mm -hmm. smiling. God has got you and all of us covered, and we will get through this. Amen. Amen. So y'all have a good night, everybody, and uh, make sure you share this live, and y'all have a good week as well, and just keep the Lord in front. Everything. Amen. All right, good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>